Hi, I'm Adam Juniper, drone nerd. See, I read a book about drones. Uh, and now I'm going to review the new Mavic Air 2. If you're wondering what's going on here, and it's not March, April, May in 2020, then maybe just think back, check your history, think what was going on in the world about that time and where the people who cut hair would be available or open. Anyway, on to what we're here for, the Mavic Air 2. Now, looking at it here with very little sense of scale except for my hands, you could easily be confused with perhaps not the Mavic Mini, that is definitely a bit smaller, but yes, the Mavic 2 is definitely a very similar piece of design work. The Mavic line is now completed, if you like, by the, the Mavic Air 2. The Mavic Mini is the one that comes in at under 250 grams, so it doesn't need registration in a lot of countries. The Mavic Air 2 weighs in at a solid 570 grams. Um, it's a heavier than the Mavic Air 1, but it doesn't really matter since it's in the same bracket and it's a much stronger aircraft for it. But arguably the more exciting addition is in a new controller. If this is not the same as the original Mavic controllers, which are all variations on this theme, or well, personally I've never really liked this beneath arrangement because it's below where I would want the screen. We now pull this, which is the antenna and the phone grip from the top. There's a storage cubby underneath here where the cable goes. Look what I've already got on my desk, a phone pops in and the cable runs around. Better to run it around the back, but there you go. Weirdly, I find it doesn't seem to press the buttons too much with my case on, although I don't know if everyone else will have the same experience. The next thing that might surprise people, the app, DJI Fly. DJI Fly is a sort of consumer-friendlier, lighter version of the DJI Go 4 flying app, which emerged at first with the Mavic Mini. Now, a lot of people thought, well, we won't get that, or we maybe only get half that with the new Mavic Air to when it was being rumoured because the features aren't there. Well the features are now definitely there for something a little more powerful. This thing here features a lot of the tracking stuff that was first thrown in the Inspire so it can follow subjects and and I actually found that as long as you're near enough to a subject you can get tracking. You can't obviously get something that's 10 pixels high from halfway across a field but from Half the length of a football field, despite the wide angle viewfinder, it will definitely pick up and follow a transit van. So the app, I personally don't quite like it as much for, it's a silly reason, but it does bug me, is that I don't like the way that the battery remaining information is displayed. On DJI Go and Go 4, there's a sort of green, yellow, red bar, which gives you an indication of how much time you need to fly back given how, based on how far you are from your start location. Whereas clearly the new app has been designed to look as much like a phone camera app as possible, but it actually means tiny little icons in the corner that you have to sort of look at a little bit harder to gather the information. Anyway, that's a minor irritation. What you've got is HDR 4K video up to 30 frames a second and 4K video non-HDR up to 60 frames a second. Now. Previously, that was only really available at this price with the Power Vision Power Egg X. And outside Europe, um, you can also look at the Autel Evo. There's also even mention of 8K, although I haven't been able to test it because the software is not there yet. And it's only for the time lapse. So you can get an 8K time lapse. Now, it feels to me like a bit of a bolt on feature that someone in marketing went, oh, the Autel. Uh, Evo 2 has got uh, an 8K recording mode. Can we get 8K in somehow? On the other hand, there are some definite you know, planned improvements. The sensor, the imaging sensor, is a half inch, which is a quarter of the size of the one of the Mavic 2, but it is bigger than the one over 2.3. 
it's 48 megapixels, sort of, um, because it uses a quad Bayer filter, which means on a normal camera, there is a grid of pixels, and over each pixel is green, red, or blue filter. What a 48 megapixel does is have the same size as you would get in a 12 megapixel, i.e. Uh, a quarter the size Bayer filter, but under each is four image sensors and they're set at different levels of sensitivity. So that helps get your HDR information. It doesn't really give you any more color information than to get at 12 megapixels. And there's some debate as to the level of extra detail you get in the demosaicing. So that's the, the technical effect. The results, though, are pretty impressive. I'll show you here a uh, 12 megapixel and a 48 megapixel image. And what DJI have done with the software is impressive. And the 60 frame a second at 4K is a better option than is available on the, the Mavic 2 Zoom or Pro. So this, in terms of high speed uh, slow motion capture, is the best Mavic, full stop. So if you're thinking, I want a flying GoPro, I want to orbit and get cool action shots of whatever, you know, whatever action you love, um, you know, uh, BMX, whatever. Um, as you can tell, I do a lot of action things. Um, then this is should be your first choice. Some people are going to be a bit upset about the sensors. Uh, that's because people always want more than they reasonably need. On here, we have rear collision sensors, front collision sensors, and underneath collision sensors, there's also a little LED light here, which is a, a bit of a gimmick. Um, and they enable the aircraft to land automatically very well, um, track subjects, because and make sure it doesn't reverse into anything, and it has the processing power to do that. But it can't see sideways, unlike its bigger brother, Mavic 2. Um, so if it were to be orbiting something and there was a tree here, thunk. And orbiting is something that's not impossible if you're using the automated modes. So yeah, all right, it would be nice, but in most cases, if you're responsible, you should should have no real need for them. It's in DJI's press materials. They reference, for obvious reasons, the Inspire 2, from which Active Track that feature first came from. Um, the Inspire 2 always has an FPV camera pointing forward for the pilot, and it can rotate its camera whichever which way. Uh, I found there were some slightly weird moments when flying, when the camera and control in the software, I suspect it may get improved in, in versions, but there's, you certainly need to know as soon as you've finished your tracking shots where you're allowing the aircraft to track your subject to remember to stop it. So you only need to tap the little green cross to untap the thing. Actually selecting a subject to track is so obvious it took me a while to notice it. You just sort of swipe as if, as if to draw a box around it on your screen with your finger. It's a single motion. And if the air, aircraft can recognize it, it will. So lots of great features there. All of the stuff that was maybe central to the launch of the original, and in my view, slightly more attractive, Mavic Air 1, dronies and cool effects like that. Um, the panoramas, especially the high resolution panoramas, they're all here too. So no, obviously nothing's been taken away. But this is a much more business-like aircraft. It's better. It's stock solid in the air. And I mentioned the other motor already. It has one huge improvement. Sorry, two huge improvements. Sorry, three huge improvements. It's got a lot of improvement. Okay. We talked about the camera. The camera is, of course, much better. Some regards, and for some circumstances, the best camera on any Mavic full stop. Um, not so much in low light. It does have low light modes and stuff, but obviously in low light, the one inch image sensor on the Mavic 2 Pro has its advantages. Um, for certain creative choices, the Zoom, uh, Mavic 2 Zoom, is a better choice as well. But if you want to take high speed action and stuff for slow mo, then 4K 60 frames per second, fantastic. The HDR is really beautifully processed as well. And 
at, at standard HD at 1080p, you can get it up to 240 frames a second, which is, again, pretty special. So, great camera. This heavier battery, as I said, heavier drone, heavier battery means um, you can expect 34 minutes moving forward at a constant speed. In practice, I found I got to about 26, 27, 28 minutes, depending on how hard I've been flying before it decided it wanted to land. But that's not too bad at all. That's definitely within the sort of range that you would expect. I mean, I tended to have to land the Mavic Air 1 in under 15 minutes, which barely gives you time to get anywhere, take a picture and come back. Then again, with the Mavic Air 1, and this is the other big improvement, you didn't want to get too far from yourself. In practice, you would lose your video signal within two or three hundred meters uh, distance from yourself, which is not great. It's, you know, for especially for a small aircraft, it makes controlling it difficult if you can't refer back to the, the video signal. Whereas, new controller also brings OcuSync 2. OcuSync 2 uses well over 100 channels automatically switching and is capable of a 10 kilometer range. More importantly here, where we're limited to 500 meters, I didn't notice a single dropout the whole time I've been testing. I've tested this now, I've had about 10 flights with it. Even in areas where there are reasonable amounts of EF interference, it works spectacularly. It's fantastic. As you can see, I, I kind of like this thing. I'm uh, quite taken with it. Um, Control-wise, we've got the three-axis gimbal. It's almost expected. Um, you can tilt with the wheel here. The function button, which by default turns on and off the LED. Speed-wise, we've got tripod mode for those nice slow shots where you know what's going on. Uh, normal mode where you've still got your collision sensors on and uh, sport mode where if you sacrifice the sensors you can burn along at over 40 miles an hour which is pretty exciting. I really like the new controller. Um, I find it's really nice in my hand. Um, there is slightly more weight of it to the top because you've got the phone there. So you've got the screen where you'd want it where it is on a, a more professional control rather than a consumer product. Uh, at the top so you can quickly refer to it without having to look all the way down and, and also uh, well worth noting is the battery in this more sizable controller does not run out too quickly you've got several flights in there um, whereas the small ones with the other Mavics you need to charge a little bit more often than you might expect you can charge it at the same time as you're charging the batteries from the included charger um, it's a USB-C um, Yay, we're in the future now. Taking a look around the outside of the aircraft. On one on the left hand side, there's the USB-C connector, which you can use to download images you've put on the eight gig of internal memory. Probably not the best idea to use that eight gig because it's not a lot of memory for a video storage, that kind of thing. Plus it is useful to have that memory available for some of the features. On the other side, you can put a micro SD card of a decent quantity, in, a decent size in. And since you're recording at 120 Mbps, uh, which is 20 higher than the Mavic 2 Pro, it's a good idea to make sure you have a good sized uh, SD card. Sadly, there isn't one in the kit. So budget an extra 30, 40 pounds dollars for that. It's close up time. It's final verdict time. What do I think about the Mavic Air 2? Well, I absolutely love it. It solves all of the problems with the original Mavic Air but it also does almost all of the stuff you need from a Ma from the Mavic 2. So unless you have a really good use case for a zoom lens or the waterproofing from the power egg, this is probably the drone that should be at the top of your list. I'm going to um, come back and do a more detailed comparison of the Mavics in a few days, so do please hit subscribe if you want to see that. Um, if you feel like buying it, I would really appreciate you using my affiliate links, which are in the links below. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does give me a little bit towards this. Um, and if not, thank you for watching.